Howdy, students! Uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, science practices, specifically the fifth one, data analysis. Here's some null hypothesis examples. And again, a null hypothesis uh, assumes that there's no relationship between two variables and that controlling one variable has no effect on the other variable. Um, so a null hypothesis could be cats show no preference for food based on shape. They've changed the variable shape. They're looking at cat preference. There's no connection between them. That's the null hypothesis. Plant growth is not affected by light color. They've changed the light color and they're measuring the uh, plant growth. And then age has no effect on musical ability. Uh, they're changing the age um, of the subject and they're measuring their musical ability. Uh, to review, the thing you change directly, uh, the light, the shape of the food, the age, that is the independent variable. And then the dependent variable is gonna be the one that is measured in the experiment, the one that you look at uh, over the course of the experiment. So after you've made your null hypothesis and usually an alternative hypothesis, well, which I will write out and explain uh, as well for, for uh, in a little experiment, uh, you can use something called a chi-square test to figure out whether differences between two groups or more is statistically significant. Scientists want statistically significant differences in order to make an actual conclusion. So um, they use this chi-squared test. Uh, it is named for uh, the letter. This is the Greek letter chi um, squared. Uh, this is a big sigma, uh, which means sum. Uh, and then it means O minus E squared, the observed value minus the expected value squared divided by E, uh, the expected value. Uh, and then you use a table to actually evaluate it. Uh, we're going to use this in two areas. When we're looking at groups of individuals, um, we have uh, uh, like uh, ecology. Um, uh, that's going to be one thing. We're going to do an experiment with it. Uh, you're going to devise your own experiment. Uh, and then we're, again, going to look at it in uh, Mendelian genetics. Um, so whether figuring out whether uh, something has uh, a characteristic or not, or, uh, or it varies from, from that level of inheritance. But we'll get into that later. We're going to talk about the ecology earlier. So here is a sample problem. Uh, that we could do and you might get asked to do uh, on an exam. Um, uh, an ecologist is testing habitat preferences of periwinkles on the rocky coastline of the New England coast. Um, she hypothesizes that more periwinkles will be found closer to the tide line. Uh, to test her hypothesis, she collects data by counting the number of periwinkles within a, a 0.5 meter squared quadrat sample. Uh, that she observes on a rocky coastline uh, location at low tide. Uh, so she's taken measurements at several different uh, locations. These are going to be your categories at low tide line, one meter above it, two meters above it, three meters above it, uh, four meters above it, and so on. And you want to determine if the difference in the number of periwinkles observed in each location is statistically significant or if it's just due to chance. And chi-squared lets you do that. So I will show you how to do that calculation. So this is how you perform the chi-squared calculation. The formula for the chi-squared calculation is sum of, uh, in parentheses, O minus E squared over E. The best way to do that, because the sum of means you need to do the calculation for every single one of these uh, groups and then add them all together. So setting up a table, I find uh, to be the easiest way to go about it. From our sample problem, uh, I'm going to fill in the observed values. This is what the ecologist actually observed. For the low tide, they observed 36. For one meter, they observed 24. For two meters, they observed 10. For three meters, they observed three, and for four meters, they observe two. Now, 
E stands for expected. And the expected value, in this case, needs to test our null hypothesis. And our null hypothesis should be that there is no difference, uh, no statistical difference between uh, periwinkles at each of these five levels. So if there is no difference, then they're going to be exactly the same. So what we do to figure out how many there would be if they would be exactly the same is add up all the periwinkles. So 36 plus 24 plus 10 plus 3 plus 2. And we get 75. And if they're all going to be the same, we're going to divide by the number of categories. Divided by five categories. So that's going to be 15 for all of them. So again, you're just finding the average. It's the total divided by the number of categories. So that's 75 over five categories. That gives us 15. We expect them to be the same for every single group, because again, no hypothesis, there's no difference. Then we need to find the difference between those. So that's 36 minus 15, 21, 24 minus 15, 9, 10 minus 15, negative 5, 3 minus 15, negative 12, and 2 minus 15. Give, whoops, 2 minus, minus 15, negative 13. You could probably do that in your head, but I did it anyway. Now, some of these are negative numbers. If we add negative numbers, we might get a smaller number, which is not what we want actually for the test. That's why we square it uh, to get rid of these negatives essentially. So 21 squared for 41. 9 squared is 81. Negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. 12 squared is 144. And 13 squared is 169. Now, we have to normalize by the expected value. If you expected a much higher number, you could just have a really high number here, and that, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily statistically significant. So you divide this number by your expected value. So that's 441 uh, divided by 15. This is going to be 81 divided by 15. 25 divided by 15. 144 divided by 15 and 169 divided by 15. That gives us 29.4. This gives us 5.4. I'm going to say with rounding. Six and eleven point two seven. We'll see. Now remember, we have this sum, so that means we need to add all of these numbers together to get our final chi squared value. So we have twenty nine point four plus. 5.4 plus 1.67 plus 9.6 plus 11.27. That gives us 57.34. That is our calculated chi-square value. So we've calculated the chi-square uh, value. Now we need to compare it uh, to 
um, a table to determine whether it's statistically significant or not. Uh, first, you need to know the degrees of freedom, um, basically how many independent uh, categories you have. And it's a little complicated, but, but you need to remember to calculate this. It's the number of categories that you have minus one. Um, so in the example problem, uh, we had five different categories, you know, the, the at low tide and then the four levels above that. Uh, so our degrees of freedom is five categories minus one, and that equals four. So now we have our calculated chi-square value, and we need to figure out whether uh, the chi-squared value means anything. So we need to look at this table. This table is going to be given to you. You don't need to memorize these values. This table is going to be given to you on a big sheet, um, the, your equation sheet. It's two sides. You don't need to memorize any of those equations. You just need to know how to use it. So this is how you use it. As I talked about before, we had five categories. Uh, level at the tide, one meter above, two meters above, three three meters above and four meters above. So five categories, the degrees of freedom is four in this instance. So uh, we are gonna look in this area right here. It says degrees of freedom, we look at four. Now, we're, it's gonna have both the uh, p-value of p uh, 0.05 and 0.01, uh, on that table. Generally speaking, scientists want to be 95% confident uh, that it, the, the difference is not due to chance. Uh, so uh, to do that, you're going to look at the P equals 0 0.05. That's the category that we're going to be going to, or the, the row we're going to go to. So we're looking in this column, four, because we had five categories and five minus one is four, and then 0 0.05, because that's the p-value that we compare to. And we get a value of 9.49. 9.49 is what's called the critical value from the table. 9.49, it's the value we're going to compare to. Um, now, we have an, our null hypothesis that we tested. Uh, that there is no statistically significant difference for periwinkle location at the different distances from the tide line. Uh, more simply, you could say uh, periwinkles do not have a preference for location. These are periwinkles, by the way. Do not have a preference for location above the tide line, but this is the most accurate way to say it. But we calculated our chi-squared value of 57.4. Uh, this is our chi-squared value, 57.34. Uh, the table value was 9.49. And if our chi-squared value is greater than our critical value, our table value, then we reject the null hypothesis. Uh, and we can say that we reject the null hypothesis. There is a statistical, statistically significant difference for the periwinkle location at the different distances from the tide line. Um, so if you reject the null hypothesis, there is a connection between the two, testable, two tested variables. You are measuring the number of periwinkles. You are changing the distance from the tide line. Uh, or you could also say the variance observed is not due to chance. Now, if you fail to reject the null hypothesis, which, which was not in this scenario, then the variance is due to chance, or there is no connection between the two tested variables. So again, if we don't reject the null hypothesis, we do not accept the null hypothesis. We just say we failed to reject it. The variance, the change, was just due to chance. Uh, and that is what you need to do for a chi-square hypothesis test. I certainly hope that was helpful.